Substitution is crucial to our model of interpreting, but it turns out to be an expensive operation. Let me show you what I mean. Suppose we have an expression like this, let x be 1 and let y be 2, and we have this big plus expression. We have 100 things added together, and at the end is y and x. In order to interpret this expression, we will need to evaluate the 1 and then replace all the x's with 1. So somewhere along the way, we'll get to something like interp this let y, etc. But to build up the second expression, to get a 1 here instead of an x, we had to rebuild all of the plusies that are around it. That's what subst and recursive calls to subst will do. And then after we've done all of that work, we need to handle this let y be 2, which will involve replacing this y with a 2, and again, rebuilding those 100 plus expressions around it. So what you see is if we use this pattern and we have n different variables instead of just two x and y, and if we add them all up in this nested way, it's going to take us quadratic time to interpret this. And that doesn't seem right. We should be able to evaluate an expression like this in linear time. The key to doing that, to making this have good time complexity, is to not actually perform the substitution, but just keep track of the substitutions we would have done if we did it right away. Instead of actually doing it right away, we will defer the substitutions. We'll have every expression with a little bubble attached to it to say, what are the things that I would have replaced by now, or should have replaced by now? When we start out with an expression, we haven't done any substitutions, so the bubble is empty here. But then, when I want to replace x with 1, I don't actually go in and change the, the piece of syntax that I have. I don't change the expr. I just pair that inner expression, the body expression, with a little bubble that says x should be replaced by 1. I've just deferred the substitution, but imagine that the substitution happened. And then when I want to replace y by 2, I do the same thing. I add to my bubble to say we've got the body expression now, and remember that whenever you see y, that was supposed to be replaced by 2, and x was supposed to be replaced by 1. As the interpreter goes through this expression, it will eventually get to uh, interpreting a y, but that y will still have this bubble attached to it that says I defer to substitution of y to 2. So it will replace that with a 2 right away. And in that way, we do the substitution at the last minute when we look at the y instead of uh, going in preemptively and doing an actual replacement and rebuilding all the surrounding expressions. That will end up having linear time to interpret this, uh, this expression. Let's look at a few more examples though. What if we have let x be 1 and let x be 2 and x? This x, of course, should refer to this x, which has value 2, not 1. When we take our first step, we're going to uh, get rid of the outer let and remember that x should be 1. And then what's going to happen with this let is we're going to remember that x should be 2 in addition to x be 1. So it looks like we have a conflict here. We have conflicting information that x is 2 and x is 1. But if instead of keeping this information as a set, we keep it as a list, then we can always start at the beginning of the list, and that turns out to be the right answer. The closest binding to x is going to be the most recent decision of a substitution. Right. So our lookup for x should find 2 here. We need to pick a representation of substitutions and a search strategy that finds the right one. Right? And that search strategy is easy. It's always add to the start of the list and always check from the start.